the Breaking Defense All Domain Interview, made possible by our presenting sponsor, Parsons. I know that you and uh, the Air Force and the Army have an MOU so that everybody talks and people can't go, well, I don't want to play with this. Um, we haven't seen a lot of talk from the Navy or from the Air Force and the Army about the Navy. Are you meeting with uh, senior Naval people on a regular basis? Uh, are uh, you looking at ways to tie into NIFCA, that sort of thing? Yeah, great. So uh, I've actually seen a lot of a lot of forward progress across the the services. Of course, the Joint Staff and OSD are are leading the charge to bring everybody together uh, in that united front, both for standards as well as uh, some of the experimentation events uh, and, of course, the concepts which we talked about earlier. Um, so I, I they're leading the charge there, but but also uh, and in addition to that, uh, each of the services are already working together. Uh, so, for example, at that the three on-ramps that we did as an Air Force and Space Force this past fiscal year, each of the services had some role in, some larger than others and some smaller, uh, mostly due to just conflicting events and where assets needed to be or the maturity of tech systems over time. Likewise, uh, we're working to do the same uh, with the Navy, uh, which, which we started to do here with the partnership and Valiant Shield uh, for the third on-ramp in September. Uh, and then going forward with their overmatch uh, and, of course, project convergence with the Army. And so there are a lot of, uh, of opportunities to be able to, to work together. Uh, and we're very aligned in terms of the, the vision. Uh, I think the, the, the memo that was signed between the Army and the Air Force was, uh, was a great step. It basically codified what the, the technical folks have been, been working on you know, to date and with the, the real, you know, drive from the top, which is very helpful to make sure that uh, any any red tape gets cleared away to make sure that we can keep moving forward. And, and that's helpful. Uh, uh, and I'm seeing good partnership as well from the, the Navy and their work uh, as we go forward. You asked specifically about some of the fire control systems from the other services I, as well. Uh, so the, the Navy argues, you know, that essentially that's sort of their version of ABMS, if you will, for, for their surface fleet. Yeah. So what what we don't want to do is create sort of the the one the one C two system to kind of rule them all. What we're really talking about the the power is uh, freeing up that data and allowing each of the services access to the information and then sharing of that information. And each service has its own has its own need and in the context of an operation has its own operational imperative. So we've got to be, from a technology perspective, flexible enough to enable the operators to make those uh, make those decisions uh, and then support their tactics, techniques, and procedures, and, and at the operational level, their operational concept, uh, with, without being sort of encumbered by technology, not limiting to them. So what that you're, you're confident that you're talking enough with the Navy that that won't be an issue? Yeah, so the, the here, here's where I think the, from a technical perspective, when you get to the brass tacks, uh, you, you not only provide that end state, but you also provide the, the, the best technical approach to that. And when you get away from one system, quote unquote, doing everything, uh, first of all, you're, you're moving in a good direction. But what that does mean is that uh, now, now your discussions with the services from a technical level are really about what data do you have? We've got cloud, we've got data, you've got some data, maybe you don't have the cloud. Uh, and so then it's how do I uh, connect the networks there? So for the Navy integrated fire control you know, network, that is that is great. It has a function and an important function to go do. It may or may not be the case that all the data from that particular you know, kill chain, whatever, is relevant to all other players. And so what we really care about as if you're the uh, integrated battle command, you know, IBCS system or the integrated tactical network in the army or the Titan intelligence work or your variety of air force, you know, networks and the same thing for the Navy. We don't want to overwrite those systems, but instead we want to connect to and move data into and out of those systems. Best thought of like a bunch of subnets on the internet. We're talking to each other over big internet but my home network is different than your home network, different than office network. And that'd be the equivalent of IBCS and NIFCA. Those are all relevant for their purposes, 
the power then comes by enabling both those, those uh, digital systems, but also the platforms they operate on with the benefit of all of the information that's available outside of that organic system, which may help, for example, the Navy queue systems more effectively or you know, better manage their radar resources because they had the ability to get information elsewhere that was beyond their sort of local tactical network and availability. So working through uh, data sharing uh, and then network connectivity, both tactically as well as through transport is, is part of where the money is gonna be made, if you will, from an operational impact perspective. Mm -hmm.